Today we bring you the second part of 50 saving hacks and tips to help you boost your savings and support your journey towards achieving financial freedom. All right, let's continue with the saving tips, which will cover food, health, travel, and more. Number 25 is to avoid coffee to go. For me personally, it helps to ask myself whether these small things are a habit, something I picked up somewhere and continue to do, or whether it's actually a pleasure, something I thoroughly enjoy every moment of. Remember that you're paying for the full price of sitting down, relaxing, and enjoying the nice atmosphere in your local coffee shop. So why not just do exactly that? If you enjoy walking fast with coffee, try bringing it from home. Number 26 is to reduce takeaways and eating out too much. If you're a foodie and this is a hobby for you, by all means go ahead. But for many others, ask yourself again, is it a pleasure or is it a habit? Indulging in occasional outings can be delightful, but if done too frequently, beware of falling into the trap of hedonic adaptation. If you really want to save some money, try hosting potluck dinners as a fun alternative. Number 27 is to engage in meal planning. Organizing yourself with a pen and paper and a good old shopping list will help you avoid buying and wasting too much food. It will also reduce impulse buying once you're at the grocery store. Number 28 is to freeze meals for a later use. This may seem obvious, but never let a good meal go to waste. Also, if you haven't already, try batch cooking at the start of each week to save yourself some precious time and money. Number 29 is to choose your grocery store wisely. Remember what we laid out at the beginning of part one. Every $100 that you save each month is over $100,000 after 30 years of investing. Is the fancier store really worth it? Isn't it possible to get good, healthy ingredients also at the cheaper store? In some cases, we may be talking about several hundreds dollars worth every single month. Number 30 is to shop for food only once per week. Unless you have too much time on your hands or enjoy spending it at the food store multiple times per week, force yourself to plan your shopping trips on a weekly basis. You will not only save money by reducing food waste and impulse buying, but will also save on transportation costs. Number 31 is to also buy generic brands. For a lot of food types, the difference is minimal. Try to identify which generic brands you can live with and refuse to pay the steep marketing costs of fancier brands. Number 32 is to buy seasonal. Avoid buying strawberries in January, figs in February, or blueberries in March. Familiarize yourself with a seasonal calendar and have a good overview of what is in season in your location. Number 33 is to lean towards plant-based meals and to cook from scratch. And here we have a triple win. Plant-based meals are not only good for your health, but they're also good for the environment, and if done smartly, they can be good for your wallet. And if you need some motivation to eat more healthily, I can really recommend the latest Netflix show on centenarians, Blue Zones Live to 100. Check it out. Number 34 is to try out our food waste inventory challenge. You can't manage what you can't measure. And here, I need you to take a small leap of faith with me. This simple exercise may be painful at first, but it is certainly worth it if you want to cut back on your food waste bill. Place a blank sheet of paper on the front of your fridge at the beginning of the month. Each time you throw away a food item, note it down along with its estimated price. For example, one yogurt, 25 cents, half a sauce of a jar, one dollar, and so on. Add up all the items at the end of the month, multiply by 12, and voila, you have your estimated annual food waste bill. The initial shock may be good news since it will probably lead you to save a lot more money down the road. Number 35 is to bring food with you. Get in the habit of carrying some food around with you. Water, fruit, a small healthy snack. You never know when you'll be hungry next and this small habit may save you quite a bit of money over time. Number 36 is to avoid sugary drinks. Give your body the very best it deserves. Aim for 8 to 10 glasses of water per day. Number 37 is to consider your gym membership. Analogous to the advice on eating out, if the gym is your passion, by all means go ahead and skip on to the next money-saving tip. But if you struggle to go to the gym regularly, perhaps you can find cheaper ways to stay in shape. Number 38 is to quit or reduce smoking and alcohol. I think this one is pretty obvious, but let's do some quick math on the smoking example. A pack a day will set you back roughly $250 per month or $3,000 per year in the US. Investing this money instead over the course of a 40 year period would render you a portfolio in the ballpark of $600,000. Number 39 is to travel during off-peak seasons. I know, I know, I'm very aware that for many with kids, this is a tricky one to implement. You take your vacation when your kids are off from school, together with everyone else. 
But if you don't face this restriction, make it a habit to travel during the off season for lower airfare and accommodation costs. Number 40 is to use travel comparison websites. Hopefully this is quite an obvious tip for most of us, but still worth highlighting. Book your travel well in advance and be sure to use websites that scan numerous travel and airline companies to find the best deals on flights and accommodations. Number 41 is to cook your own meals when traveling. Consider booking accommodations with kitchen facilities and prepare your own meals instead of eating out every single meal. This one of course requires more effort, but it is also a big one in terms of savings. Perhaps you can find a middle ground and just avoid eating out every single meal. Number 42 is to use travel rewards. Remember to use credit card rewards, airline miles or hotel points to offset the costs of flights and accommodations. And of course this depends heavily on your location. I'm aware that in the US you can get away with traveling quite cheaply in this manner. In other regions, for example in Europe, there are possibilities but at the same time they are more limited. Number 43 is to plan presents in advance. Acquire presents for your loved ones well in advance throughout the year when you see good deals. Avoid last minute compulsive shopping which just ends up being more expensive. Number 44 is to find inexpensive presents that add value. Have you ever heard of someone complain after receiving a good book? Normally more thought goes into choosing the right book for someone than just randomly picking up a scarf or a purse at the mall. Number 45 is to use the library. I personally like to own the book to make notes and be able to revisit its best parts later. I also liked how it looks in the background. It gives our home a cozy feeling. But if you're not into this sort of stuff, remember you can save on books and other resources through your local library. Number 46 is to avoid lottery tickets. Americans spend about $1,000 per year on lottery tickets. The odds of winning are terrible and the opportunity cost of investing this money over a 40 year period is around $200,000. Number 47 is to rent out tools and equipment. Avoid buying items for one time uses. There are multiple ways to getting around one time use equipment. Try borrowing it from a friend or family member borrow it from the local library or find a way to rent it. Number 48 is to adopt a DIY mentality. This one can be a big money saver. Save money by reducing the need for professional services and costly repairs. Number 49 is to sell unused or unwanted items online or at garage sales. This can not only declutter your space but also put some extra cash in your pocket. It also promotes sustainability by giving your gadgets a new life with someone who will actually appreciate them. Number 50 is to practice mindful spending. Before making a purchase, especially for non-essential items, pause and ask yourself whether you truly need it or if it's just a want. Consider even waiting 24 hours before making impulse purchases to see if you still want or need the item. If you want to save more money fast, be sure to check part 1 of this video, which I will link right here. Also, if you haven't watched it already, I think you'd appreciate our latest video on the critical importance of reaching your first $100,000 invested on your road to achieving financial freedom. Remember to like and subscribe, take care and see you in the next one.